Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be doing an ultimate guide in uh, Motorsport Manager, specially created team. And uh, just to save some confusion and stuff, I'm going to split it up into multiple parts. I was thinking about making one long uh, video and then adding uh, little time marks so that you could skip to the, each little sections. But I figured for uh, your understanding and stuff, I would split it up into different uh, videos and then I would put them into pl uh, one playlist and so I'm gonna be starting a new career and then kind of going through what I've learned so far about create a, create a team. Alright of course uh, the first real choice that you make is whenever you create a character and I've already created a character here but the backstory is what you really are choosing and um, I'm going to be going with unknown backstory just to give myself a little bit more of a challenge um, so like, I, you could do that, if you, the only reason why you do an unknown background is if you wanted a challenge. Now these are all, uh, very good in their own right. Um, for this particular mode, I would suggest either going with financial, which, uh, helps you save a lot of money t over time, or, uh, X driver, which really, it, um, it really gives you a boost to your drivers. Um, the driver's stat improvement rate increased doesn't really help you in the beginning since your drivers have no potential but the feedback rating will help you along the way as well and uh, one of your biggest uh, uh, problems is having bad drivers um, and I'll explain that a little bit with the different uh, championships and stuff uh, and then Politico is pretty interesting um, this is a way that you can rig the league into your favor yeah, it's just all around just kind of like trying to keep it qualifying out of the way and stuff until you're ready for that sort of stuff because you're going to be at the back of the field for at least one or two seasons so like i said oh and then x engineer um probably the least helpful um because one day doesn't really do you much uh, i usually finish my parts by halfway through the season and then just build them up so x engineer is probably the weakest i'd probably rank them financial and x driver are probably the top uh, Politico is interesting, and X Engineer is probably the worst, and then only use Unknown if you want a challenge. So, uh, we're going to create a new team. As you see, it says experienced players only. Now, here's your next choice that you have to make. Um, I would suggest European Racing Series if you want to be successful. Um, the drivers that you get are around average in the European Racing Series, so you're not going to be as down on your luck as you are in the GT Challenger. Uh, as you can see, the team averages goes way down. The GT Challenger, uh, as you can see, is about on par with Asia Pacific. Um, so yeah, starting from the bottom there is nearly impossible. And you can try. It's going to take you a lot more, um, a lot more seasons to get up and going. So if you just want to create a team and rise to the ranks, uh, it's probably going to be more fun and less frustrating with the European Racing Series, which is what I'm going to do. And um, let me know if you want me to continue my GT Challenger series. Not many people are watching it, so I quit. Anyways, so we're going to go with the European Racing Series. So your next choice after you create your car, uh, you're going to come up and you're going to see these three options. You have low pressure, but you started with a three-star chassis and a small starting financial package. Uh, medium pressure, you get 40% uh, marketability and uh, medium starting financial package. Or you go Golden Tiger, you got high pressure, a pre built test track, and a large starting financial package. Now, these all, as this is more up to how you want to play the game as well. Um, with a three star chassis in your first season, it really helps um, if you want to compete the first season. And uh, the medium is probably uh, your best chance of surviving because one of the hardest things to overcome in this series, uh, the creative team challenge is the the amount of money that you have you start out with a lot but every single race you lose about a million dollars so you're going to want to get your team marketability up and get those sponsors to even out if not gain money every race and finally the golden tiger uh what this is going to do is it's going to set you up for hq building and you're going to be able to invest a lot into your hq because you're going to have a lot of money and this is more of a slow building one, even though it says high pressure. Um, so you'll have to perform still, you have to meet goals. But this is uh, a way to uh, get a head start and maybe slowly build your uh, team. 
Uh, but once you build up your, your base, uh, it gets a lot easier after that. So I think the strongest of these uh, for long term, as far as what I prefer, I'm going to say the team marketability is probably your best bet because you need to get those sponsor offers in there so that you have the capital to or the sustainable capital to invest in your team for the future. So I'm going to select the medium pressure for this playthrough. So now that you created your team, you're going to be uh, starting out, and of course you got your unread messages. Um, they're just telling you about the team and all that. Uh, target um, for the low uh, low thing with a three star chassis, the low pressure. Um, I would suggest going with eight, eighth. Uh, I actually did a first season and I ended up in fourth. Um, so it's very very possible to compete in the first season with a low pressure uh, package, but that's uh I'll, I'll tell you some tips and tricks on how to do that uh, in the next video or the video after that and then for the large financial package i would suggest aiming for 10th um just so that you don't have to worry about performing in the first season you can just build up your hq and you can just uh, get on with that and not worry about racing in the first season but for this we're nice in the middle i think i can uh, pull off eighth in this racing so i'm going to go ahead with eighth And as you can see, it says our drivers are awful, our designer is awful, our mechanics are awful. So everything's awful. And in fact, the staff, every single one of the staff is on a rolling contract. So you want to replace these guys immediately because they don't have like any skills at all. So there's a couple choices here. Um, I prefer to go with the unemployed. So... Um, and it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, for the high, uh, high risk, the, the Golden Tiger Bank, I would suggest going with someone for the future. Her. Marina Romano. Romero. Um, I'm not exactly sure all her stuff that, uh, whether or not she, I've only played like one season, but she's a, she's a slow cost and she has a lot of room for improvement and if you're playing the long game which is what you want to do with the uh, high pressure um, I mean you still want to perform because there's high pressure but you really you're building your team for the future you're not hitting the ground running now for hitting the ground running I would suggest uh, well for the low low starting you can hit the ground running because you have a three star chassis which let's let, let me show you you got one star so three star chassis all there's two extra stars and that is incredible uh, even though um you're starting out worse on the grid you still have a three star chassis with improvability and i ended up ninth um on the grid whenever i was done first season but i still came in fourth uh, and that that has much to do with the fact that uh, your drivers are not the worst they're actually eighth um in the gt series they are the worst and so you're not really helped out by anything. So back to uh, scouting. I would suggest uh, for medium is to get someone that's medium priced. I'm going to go with Katie Paulson. And we're going... Her wages aren't too ridiculous. Um, and whenever they're fairly important, uh, very important is about one or two clicks. And then they'll be happy from the top. Fairly, um, I think it's around two more clicks or so but I'm gonna go one more click just so that uh, we'll come back to her um, I'll give her a contract and you prefer a signing on fee so we'll give her about one under half let's see if she takes that um, of course she only has one patience so we'll only have one more chance after this um, in fact I'll put it up to half and bonus size isn't very important uh, this is very uh, important because whenever you're talking about bonus sizes, that means it, it almost discourages you from doing well. I don't like giving uh, my people bonus sizes. Uh, and if I do, I always put it down to first um, so that I, it's the least likely for them to get extra money. But it, it basically discourages you from doing well because if you get first, then you have to pay all this extra money out and you'll get less money if you, say, placed in second. Uh, depending on your sponsors. So we're going to send that off to her. And now for staff. Uh, for the K 
mechanics. There's a couple ways that you can go about this. Um, I, again, go off of uh, the unemployed. They're usually the cheapest to get and most willing to join your team. Um, and I like Gary Watson. Uh, I don't know why, but he's nice and cheap. Um, I believe 29000 is what he likes, but I always go one under because if I uh, don't give him what he wants, or if I give him what he wants, then he's going to ask for more. So I go down one, and he wants a nice signing on fee. So let's give him 18000 And bonus size is very important, so we won't give it to him. So send that off to him. And finally, um, not something I'd necessarily suggest, but you can pick up some really good uh, race engineers in your series. Um, don't try to go for higher series. But uh, I found that Maurizio Kurtz is pretty easy to convince, and he has pretty decent stats, and he has a lot of potential. Um, so I would suggest uh, getting someone like him or someone else in the series. But the point is, is that you don't want to spend too much money. You want to get decent quality. You're not, you're not performing in World Motorsport Championship, so you're gonna, you're just gonna spend a little bit of money. Um, I think his is around forty thousand, is what he likes. Um, so we're gonna go down in the low thirty thousands. Uh, he prefers a long contract and even split. Okay, nice signing on fee. Okay, that's max. Let's go down to that. And bonus size is quite important. So like I said, I like to just go down to first and then go up to max and then go down. We'll go down three clicks. We'll undercut them and then we'll bring it up. Okay. Now, now that we got all that done, um, might as well uh, do some scouting for drivers. Although that's going to be in a different video of when you actually want to uh, go ahead and get a new drivers. Uh, maybe not next video, but one of these videos. Hang on, got to find Dragon Team Race China. Yes. Um, these are very, two very good drivers um, for our level. Um, so I'm going to let all that go through. And then one final thing before we up, uh, go ahead. Well, not one final thing, we've got a couple more things. Uh, factory. Uh, we're going to want to upgrade our factory because it's going to hold us back otherwise. So go ahead and spend $8 million and upgrade the factory. And we're going to go over here and we're going to uh, add some parts. And we're just going to add one of each of these because um, we're going to replace all these parts over the season. And they have decent enough um, reliability to work. Um, the only thing that I'd suggest is the following season they won't have uh, that decent quality. They'll be down in like the 40s again. Um, and s the parts do kind of transfer. Um, I'm not exactly sure the way they decide that they transfer. But they're about the same quality as they were as you end the season as you begin it. So we'll go off with that. And we're going to design new parts. And because we don't have our designer, we're going to go on the least critical part. And we'll see the sponsors come in. Now this is something else. Um, you're going to want to, uh, eventually, if you can find a driver that's a pay driver, that's very, very helpful. Because sponsors of your driver will pay you for them to race. Meaning that uh, if they cost 100000 per race or 200000 per race, they'll give you like 139000 per race. Just to help cut down the cost of the driver. So it is nice to find those. Uh, it's hard to find them. You have to scout a lot of drivers. Uh, I know that John Stuntier is a pay driver, but she is uh, too high up. And a lot of the unemployed drivers are not pay drivers. So until you find uh, a pay driver willing to join your team, don't really worry about that. But definitely uh, try to increase your marketability because as you can see, we have level two sponsor appeal. And that is very good for what we uh, level are at. Uh, if we can raise it to three, um, then we will be able to bring down this uh, income slash cost per race. Uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to advance to see those contract. Okay, and the brakes are finished. Um, so we'll pretend to fit the parts, but we won't. And you're going to 
immediately want to throw these brakes onto performance and reliability improvement. Um, we're going to put it. Yeah, we're going to put it all the reliability, bring those up to the snuff so that whenever. So they'll be ready for the race. Um, and we're immediately going to build a new part. We're going to build another set of brakes. Uh, again, uh, you're going to want to go with the most potential with the least risk. Um, so that'll be that. And we're going to go ahead and build that part. And until you get uh, a good income coming in, you're going to want to uh, build two of each part, one average and one good, and then distribute them to your drivers as you see fit, just to keep the cost down. And you need to keep your cars improving. So that's your first thing, is just build two of each part, one good and one average. We're going to go ahead and continue and see those uh, contracts rolling. Now one thing with interviews, um, some people prefer not to uh, do any interview. Um, they're kind of, uh, they can just be a morale, uh, the, the decrease to morale to your people. There's some, some of them don't have any good answers. Um, what I found is you can usually get by on no effect or little effect. Uh, in each interview, it just depends on what answer you want to uh, say. So, uh, the first one I would definitely say, um, just do. It's it's really good. Um, it's worth it, and you can get some good boost on your drivers. Um, ugh. Oops. <laughs> but I got that. Um, you just kind of want to just keep it average. Um, gonna make sure that the you're gaining some morale especially um, with the chairman that's always good you don't want to have your job in danger um, yeah this one okay I didn't affect you <laughs> thanks preacher <laughs> anyways um, so yeah that's my thoughts on interviews um, I I'm more of like uh, create a character and then play out that character and not so much focus on pure uh, what to do right uh, I, it depends on the scenario and stuff so if you want to go all I want to be a hundred percent good on this and not you know mess anything up then you might want to skip some interviews um, but generally you can do them without much effect our first contract renegotiation came in, uh, Maurizio Kurtz, and he was uh, insulted by this, and he was okay with these. Uh, we'll go ahead and mark that up one, and um, we'll go down, we'll go up two clicks, see if he'll take that. He has a lot of patience, so we, we can risk um, doing a lot of renegotiation with him. And we got a sponsor offer. Now, what you want to do here is you really want to wait um, for more offers, especially since we have 35% marketability. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is because there's three offers, and sometimes the first offer isn't the best offer. So once you get three offers in one slot, go ahead and uh, choose your, your best offer. And we'll get more into that once we get some more offers. Oh, Katie Paulson has agreed to our contract. And we're going to go ahead and replace this designer. Another renegotiation here. We got uh, Gary Watson. So he was unhappy by that, which means that um, we're not within one click. Um, signing on fee, he was not happy about that either. So we'll go. We'll go two clicks under the max. And we'll try that one more time. Um, at worst, we'll have one last chance. Um, at best, he'll accept. As you can see, we got two more offers here. We have 500000 up front. Um, for these fixed payment sponsors, you really want to find one that is per race. Um, but there's a few exceptions to that. And for these, uh, you want upfront payments for the for target positions that are really low that you're not going to be able to get 
Um, so just look out for those, and I'll show you what I mean if we get those offers. All right, uh, our breaks are done. So now that we have our real uh, person that we're going to be going with for at least a few seasons here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, actually first, let's go ahead and check the breaks, see if there's anything different. And it doesn't look like there's anything different. So these don't change. Uh, I think it's kind of just the luck of the draw. Uh, it might change per season per car. Um, probably, yeah, it changes per season per car. Um, because it's based off of your improvability and such. So we're going to go ahead and build gearbox. Uh, acceleration plus 20. And we're going to go ahead and build that. And it won't be ready in time for the race, but that's okay. Let's see here. Oh, we got three offers here. So now you want to consider a few things. How much is this per race that we're getting? 10 races, 1 million up front. That's the same as 100,000 per race. Eight races, five hundred thousand up front. Uh, that's that's definitely less than that. Let's <laughs> just say that. And for this, it's four hundred fifty thousand up front, and uh, eighty-five thousand per race. Um, which we have to think of this in uh, per race uh, logic here. So in four races, this will only have gotten us four hundred thousand. And we don't really need upfront payments right now. Even though it's a two star, this is the much better deal. Because right here, we already made more in four races than this one would have. So we're going to go ahead with this. And plus, it's a short length. And so even though it's one star, this this uh, sponsor will go away quickly. And hopefully we'll get a better offer next time. Okay. And there's three offers available here. And so we want to consider a lot of things. Um, first off, we're much more likely to get ninth place than fifth place. So we got to take that in consideration. So this is probably more mid season, which means that maybe this would be a good deal. Um, let's check this first, see which offers. These are the ones that we're going to be using in the beginning. And it's very, very, very clear that this is this is not worth it. Um, it's a toss up. I'm gonna go ahead with Golden Tiger because you get 900,000 up front payment, and it's a little bit lower. This is something that we can probably attain every race if we race hard. So I'm gonna go ahead with the Golden Tiger. This is probably the one that we're going to be choosing every time. Now this one, uh, we probably want just the upfront payment. We might get this near the end of the season, but we're planning. We're, we're I'm not a risk taker typically, so we're just gonna go ahead and take the upfront payment. I'll probably regret it, um, but it's a little bit shorter than this, so we should be able to switch offers near the end of the season. Whenever we're actually at that level of performance. And there's only two offers here, so we'll just hold off for this for now. And our contract came in, and it was accepted. So we're going to go ahead and sign him. And it doesn't matter which slot he takes. They're both rolling contracts. Contract renegotiation. All right. So we will not get Gary Watson um, for this race. So we're going to go ahead and we'll submit this offer in. But he will not be available for this race. Which is unfortunate, but it's not a huge deal. We're not going to perform too, too well in this race to begin with. And that brings us to our first race. Um, and I'll get... Um, it doesn't really matter which race I go ahead and explain, but that will be next episode. Um, strategies for races and such. Uh, so if you like this video, leave a like, and uh, be sure to check out the next video. It should be coming up in a few. Um, hopefully it's out tomorrow. Uh, I'm planning on releasing one of these every day. I'm hopefully going to edit these all together and then release them one by one. Um, yeah, just stick around, and uh, let me know if I missed anything, if I am uh, said something wrong. I'm willing to correct some videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.